So what we want to do is let's look at a, a marginal cost curve for a real set of generators. Um, the picture we have here is the marginal cost of various resources <coughs> available in the PJM region of the U.S. PJM is a regional transmission organization in the U.S. and PJM uh, accepts bids for uh, power supply according to what it's the gener the generators in the members the members utilities in PJM. So all of the generators available at this particular time when this graph was drawn are shown in order of increasing marginal cost. <clears throat> so uh, we have some zero marginal cost sources. This, this um, graph is from an earlier time at PJM. I'll show you a more recent one soon. You can see there is a very small amount of zero marginal cost resources and that is some hydroelectric and some early renewables generation in PJM. So those have zero marginal cost and then we have um, very low marginal cost resources, hydroelectric resources, again, which may have some opportunity cost of generation. Uh, next we have nuclear, which has very low marginal cost. And listed on the rest of the graph are various um, baseload power plants that uh, burn coal and natural gas. <clears throat> and then over on the far right hand side we have resources that are only intended to be used at very high demand periods. So if you think about uh, peak demand in PJM in this some on a hot summer day um, we're using all of the very low marginal cost resources, we're using all of our normal baseload resources, and we're also starting to get into some of our peaking generation. Uh, if the demand were very, very high, we would uh, add in some of our expensive oil, uh, diesel generators, um, gas turbines, and at very high prices, even some resources that aren't expected to be used except for very rarely. Now, keep in mind that if we were to have demand, I'll call this very high, very high demand, the marginal cost of the last resource brought online here is $60 per megawatt hour. At $60 per megawatt hour, the nuclear plants are earning very high scarcity rents. The zero marginal cost sources are earning all $60 above their variable costs, but are earning scarcity rents above their uh, levelized average cost. The nuclear plants are earning scarcity rents. Coal plants are earning scarcity rents. Natural gas plants, all of them are these much lower cost resources will be earning significant scarcity rents when the cost of electricity is at sixty dollars per megawatt hour. And so as the demand gets greater and greater and we start drawing into the supply uh, more of these high marginal cost resources, we're paying scarcity rents to all these other generators. And that makes up for the time when they're not running. It makes up for the time when they're running but not covering all their fixed costs. So here's um, a picture, uh, an updated picture of the uh, supply stack for the PJM Regional Transmission Organization in the U.S. And uh, I want to particularly focus on uh, some of the very low marginal cost resources here. So if you notice, there are actually some resources that have a negative marginal cost of generation. Now how could that ever happen that a resource would have a negative marginal cost of generation? Well, one way this might happen is if you have resources that um, cannot 
change rapidly and need to keep running uh, uh, even as you have uh, rapid changes in the supply. But we can even have resources that have a, a negative uh, a negative marginal cost of running uh, even in the longer run. One example would be renewable resources that are under contract to generate renewable certificates that they're selling to some other party. So if a wind turbine is, uh, which has essentially a zero marginal cost of actually generating electricity, they might be under contract to sell renewable energy certificates that are generated by this wind power. If they stop generating, then they're no longer generating these uh, renewable certificates and they have to, if they're under contract to provide them, they'll have to purchase these renewable certificates from someone else. So it's worth continuing to generate even when the, uh, even at a zero marginal cost because they need to generate these renewable certificates and would actually keep generating even at a moderately negative marginal cost where people are being paid to receive the electricity from the wind turbine. Uh, and the reason is the wind turbine needs to keep running to generate these renewable certificates. Replacing them would be expensive, and so it's better to go ahead and run the turbine at a small loss on the electricity in order to keep generating the renewable certificates. So some resources can have a negative marginal cost of operation, in, in which case um, uh, the certain uh, uh, demanders of electricity will actually be compensated for using electricity at that time rather than having to pay for it. Then we have a number of zero marginal cost sources. We might think of these as wind power, solar power, uh, hydroelectric power. Then we have um, nuclear and coal and natural gas. and uh, and way out here on the right hand side we have all those um, all those very expensive marginal cost resources that will only run in very high demand period times and so for different levels of demand uh, suppose we have uh, our an average load for the year here's the average load for PJM in 2015 uh, in which case, during the during the sort of average times, we're running only base load, only base load power plants, uh, our our coal and new natural gas units, nuclear, um, hydroelectric, and renewable sources are all running, and only the lowest cost resources are earning enough to cover all their levelized cost of energy. Uh, of course, as demand rises, high periods of demand, we have marginal cost rising. These other power plants are starting to earn more than, um, than their marginal cost of operation and more than their levelized cost of energy, so they'll be making scarcity rents. But only in the highest demand periods, the peak demand periods, will we run some of these really expensive resources. And so you might think of this as being, in, in some cases, there will be um, a locality where there are grid constraints, the cost of generation will be especially high there, we'll have to run um, even the high marginal cost resources uh, to provide uh, electricity in those locations. Uh, and that will drive up the, uh, the, the price that is paid to the resources in that location or across the whole region if the, if the demand is high across the entire region. So essentially this is the scarcity pricing story. If we have very low demand, then we're only operating our low base load units. They're just they're making enough to cover variable costs and some of their fixed costs. In high demand periods, 
the price rises, and these sources are making scarcity rents so that they cover their full generation, uh, their long-run generation costs, and the sources that are only run intermittently uh, are run when prices are very high, and they get um, the sources that are run during this period run at very low capacity factors. So, which plants are we going to build? Well, to decide that, let me clean this up a little bit. To decide which plants need to be built, we have to think about how much time the market will be spending at each of these conditions. The very the low demand periods, let's get the pencil back. We have low demand periods where the marginal cost of the last unit brought into production is very low, uh, in which case none of the other resources, um, none of the higher cost resources out to the left are earning, are, are operating, uh, earning any revenue, and only the lowest cost facilities are earning any scarcity rents. Then we have higher cost periods and higher demand periods and higher demand periods, and as demand rises, we allow the price to match the cost of the resources needed to meet that demand, and that generates the scarcity rents. Well, one thing to think about if you're thinking, trying to decide whether or not we should invest in new generation capacity either at the base load or at the uh, peaking unit level is how long are we going to spend at these high prices and the longer we spend at the higher prices <clears throat> the more scarcity rents are being earned by the lower cost resources and once we get to the point where we're spending uh, enough time at these higher prices it's going to be worth expanding the resources in this low marginal cost part of the supply stack, in which case the whole supply stack moves outward and we spend less time at these really high marginal cost, uh, these really high marginal cost periods because the whole supply stack has moved out to the right and we'll be using our baseload units for more of the time and less of the time at these really high uh, marginal cost times. If we're not spending very much time at the high marginal cost periods, then the only thing we would want to invest in is a new peaker unit because it, any resources built for operating at these really high capacity times will only be run at very low capacity factors. So we depend on there being enough time, so it's worth building the peaker unit, but not so much time at those high prices that it's worth building a, a new baseload power station. And so the scarcity pricing story depends on two things. It depends on the price, and it depends on how much time we're spending at that high price. So we think about the load curve being how much time are we spending at really high prices, how much time are we spending at medium prices, how much time are we spending at low prices? And the investor is going to look and see at this, uh, for, for this pattern of prices, is it worth my building a new baseload power plant? Is it better to build um, a, uh, a low capacity factor peaker unit? But the prices that we observe over time are going to be the signal the entrepreneur needs to know which of these resources to build. So this is the scarcity pricing story in a nutshell. If we allow the price to match the marginal cost of resources required to meet demand at a given amount of time, then entrepreneurs will have incentive to invest in the right resources because they know that the price will be spending only a certain amount of time at these very high prices. And the amount of time at those high prices determines whether we're going to invest in uh, another small unit of high price capacity or larger units 
of low variable cost capacity.